There's one fact and everything else is speculation. The fact is that this journalist was killed. That is, that is a fact. Who killed her? It is not exactly clear. Uh, the Palestinians did not wait for any for, for any kind of investigation or questioning or anything. Uh, there's a massive, uh, um, let's call it, uh, uh, accusation of Israel. Uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the head of the Palestinian Authority, saying Israel is responsible for this uh, journalist being killed. Hamas issuing a statement saying this is just another uh, just another uh, a crime of the occupation. Who was she killed with? By it is not exactly clear. The IDF says it was most probably, most probably, a Palestinian militants. We do know that uh, Palestinian militants were were firing all over the place, and they even at a first at a first uh, uh, at, a, at a first glance they said they identified a hit and someone falling to the ground. They thought it was an IDF soldier. Apparently, it, it, it wasn't. And uh, the IDF putting a statement saying that in the last few hours, Israeli security forces conducted counterterrorism activity to apprehend terror suspects in the uh, Janine refugee camp. And uh, uh, we see that uh, during the activity, tens of Palestinian gunmen fired and hurled explosive devices towards the soldiers. Soldiers responded with fire towards the gunmen and hits were identified on the, those specific gunmen. The IDF is investigating the event and looking at the possibility that journalists were hit by the Palestinian gunmen. This is the Israeli uh, uh, statement. Israel also offered the Palestinians to hold a joint investigation. Palestinians categorically say no. Uh, I have to say that even if, if, even if, as Israel claims, and, and uh, would I happen to believe that this uh, journalist was shot by Palestinian fire, at the end of the day, uh, the accusation on Israel is all over the world. And if we go back some 22 years, there's the issue of Muhammad Adura, a, a boy that was shot and killed, we now know, by Palestinian fire in Gaza. But the whole notion given that day is that he was killed by Israel, and that's what remains in memory. Whether it was Israel who, uh, Israeli fire or Palestinian fire, uh, the, the notion given all over the world and in international media is that the, this shoulder, this uh, uh, journalist was killed by Israeli fire. This is what remains, whether it's true or not. Rafael, you were telling me, how would an investigation like this go forward, uh, looking at the bullet, for example? Yes, because uh, the, what we do need is the cooperation of the Palestinians in that investigation, considering the corpse of the victim is uh, in their hands and uh, in the hands of the Ministry of Health of the Palestinian Authority. Uh, they are not cooperating right now, uh, even though the <coughs> representative of the coordinator, military coordinator, are there in Jenin trying uh, to investigate with them. So if it's a bullet from the IDF, usually it's a marked, all these bullets are marked. They can be very easily identified. You can even trace them to the gunman who shot it. Uh, these bullets could have been shot by the IDF could have been a ricochet. What we do see in the, the footage that is available is that a lot of the uh, terrorists who were firing at the IDF were not even aiming. We see them like shooting from the corner of the house, not looking at what they're shooting at. All this being said, one must remember a couple of things. First of all, all the uh, Israel is one of the rare countries in the world where journalists can do their job freely. Uh, in a complete free, free manner, even with coordinating with the IDF uh, spokesman unit. Uh, they can be taken <coughs> uh, to a theater of operation to cover uh, what is happening, but they can also move freely and be present freely. They, they're used to it. You, when any big incident in the Judea and Samaria, for instance, will be covered, sometimes it's even, yes, uh, the, the, it, creates, it creates the incident. There is freedom of press here, definitely. I, definitely. I do want to ask, though, but regarding the bullet, for example, there's also so much stolen ammunition that's one yes. point. So would they know even if they look at the bullet and even if it's numbered? And the second question is, there's also another journalist that was injured there on site. He would or she would probably have more information maybe on what happened exactly. Maybe, but uh, shot in the back, so maybe we're running away from the scene, so I'm not sure how much. Uh, whatever uh, happened, uh, it, we have to understand that uh, around 50 journalists are killed every year. 
doing these very dangerous jobs that they're doing. Most of them are not killed during uh, a conflict uh, or uh, during a military situation. The, some of them are eliminated by uh, dictatorships or uh, uh, gangsters. Uh, but it is a dangerous situation. Uh, usually, the journalists know by experience, especially this particular journalist. She's been f uh, 30 years with uh, Al Jazeera uh, covering all these events. Where to stand when uh, uh, things get very hot? They have like a neutral uh, place, but of course, they're not. Uh, it's just dangerous. Now, uh, on the Palestinian side, the, uh, to identify an IDF uh, shot is very easy. On the Palestinian side, you have uh, weapons that are um, home, homemade uh, in some uh, warehouses in, inside the Palestinian Authority. You have weapons being smuggled from Jordan. Uh, two or three of them were uh, deliveries were stopped just this month from Jordan. Uh, you have uh, 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 criminal uh, mafia people who sell yeah. uh, weapons to people. So there are all kinds of weapons, uh, all kinds of calibers. Yeah. Uh, but it's a very sad morning, uh, of course, uh, here in Israel and, and for journalists uh, all around the world, of course, for her um, uh, outlet, Al Jazeera, and for the journalist's uh, family. Uh, Jonathan, this is part of an operation that's been going on uh, in the West Bank uh, for two months now, um, following terror attacks in Israel that killed 19 Israelis. Also, dozens of Palestinians have already been killed in the West Bank during these operations, and there's no end to it in sight. Doubtful. Uh, this is happening. It's no surprise that this is happening mostly in the area of Jenin. Operations such as this one are taking place practically every night, especially in the past two months since this terror wave in uh, Israel uh, began. What is different here is the fact that this journalist has been killed, uh, and this brings this specific operation to the spotlight, but operations in Jenin uh, have been ongoing all the time, Jenin being the hotspot of terrorism in the West Bank. Very very little presence of the Palestinian Authority. That is why uh, terror cells, especially of the Islamic Jihad, can can uh, grow there in uh, the area of Jenin. Let's remember the terrorists who carried out the attack in Bnei Brak and the one who carried the attack here in Tel Aviv, not far from the place where we are, came from the area of Jenin, crossed the, um, the, the security fence in one of the many holes there are in the area. You can even cross in some places with a car. And, and uh, that is why Israel is operating constantly in Jenin, as unfortunate as this incident uh, it may be, regardless of uh, who, who is the one that shot the, the, the journalist, it's an unfortunate incident. Uh, but operations such as this one will continue because Israel understands that it has to stop the terror cells, confront the terror cells, arrest those terrorists still in the West Bank before they cross into Israel proper. So as unfortunate as this incident may be, uh, these incidents, may, the, these operations may stop for a few days, but uh, in the long run, they will continue. This is uh, the way for Israel to try and prevent uh, terror our activities within Israeli territory. Okay. Jonathan, thank you very much. Uh, Rafael Yerushalmi, thank you for joining us uh, this morning.